All right. Thank you for listening to Remake Rewind, the podcast where we decide if remakes or reboots should have happened. As always, I'm Mike. With me, I've got my two co-hosts. I've got Alex. How you doing, Alex? Hey, Mike. I'm doing well. <laughs> You, you, you happy I made you go first this time? <laughs> I know. It's totally. change of face. <laughs> right, right. I'm actually up, a little D? upset about it. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Is, I uh, wanted to... Unwelcome. <laughs> yep. Yeah, well, you know what? <laughs> fuck you, Double D. Yeah, well, fuck you too, Michael. You were the last one on the podcast today, so uh, you get... You well, get it's because I was last. waiting for Alex and I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I don't care. Yeah, you're right. All I right. No well, uh, <laughs> we're going to be uh, doing our Halloween specials. Um, so far... We recorded. I don't know which when, which one I'm going to put out first. We've already recorded Evil Dead. We're recording Halloween now, so we're going to be covering the uh, original 1978 version and the 2007 Rob Zombie version. Oof. And uh, we're going to try to do at least one more, maybe two more episodes this month. We haven't really decided yet, but we'll, we'll figure that out eventually, and we'll let you know. And uh, I, I I think we should just get into it. Have you guys seen these movies before? Yes. I have seen the original. I had not seen the Rob Zombie remake. What about you, Alex? I've seen the original a long time ago, um, and I have seen the Rob Zombie one. I actually had not seen the Rob Zombie one, and I had never actually seen the original one in its entirety. What? I actually saw Halloween 2, oh. um, so the sequel to the original one. And which is interesting, the reason we're covering Halloween this year is because, of course, there is a, a new one coming out, which is replacing the sequel to the original series. So, in theory, the one that we're getting is the third Halloween 2. They're just calling it Halloween. So, the the one that comes out this month is a direct sequel to the first movie we're going to talk about, and it's erasing all the other Halloween movies, which is weird because uh, okay. the Halloween... Uh, the... Yeah, yeah. Because H2O so... doesn't... Or something like that. One of them. So H2O... So the thing that's weird about the... This is technically like the third reboot of the Halloween series. So there was Halloween... There was Halloween, which we're going to talk about in a bit. Halloween 2. And then the first reboot was Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, which did not have Michael Myers in it. It wasn't like a slasher film. It was like a weird magic toy story kind of thing <laughs> and then nobody watched it so they decided to go back to having michael myers so there's like halloween 4 halloween 5 well like and... what they wanted to do is create like an anthology kind of exactly thing. Yeah. right and that didn't work out so they went back to the michael myers thing and i think they did a four five and a six yeah. and then in 1998 the 20th anniversary of the halloween series jamie lee curtis decided that she wanted to um, come back so then they made Halloween H2O, and actually that erased 4, 5, 6. <laughs> or 4, 5. I don't remember which ones they actually are. So that was the second reboot of the series. <laughs> and then in 2007, we had another reboot with um, what that Rob Zombie did, which is also the movies we're going to be talking about. So, yeah, it's a really interesting uh, kind of history of this movie series. And, yeah, I, I, I'm ready to talk about it. You guys ready to talk about it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Who's got my synopsis right. for uh, 1978? All right. That'll be me. Uh, this is from a massive fan. The year is 1963. The night Halloween. Police are called to 43 Lambkin Lane, only to discover that the 15 year old Judith Myers has been stabbed to death by her six year old brother, Michael. After being institutionalized for 15 years, Myers breaks out on a night before Halloween. No one knows, nor wants to find out what will happen on October 31st, 1978. Besides Myers' psychiatrist, <laughs> Dr. That was Lewis. A weird way to phrase it. <laughs> <laughs> he knows why he was coming back. Um, but by the time the town realizes it, it'll be too late for many people. You know, I did like a fun sitcom spin to it. <laughs> yeah, it's weird because it's like nobody will know. Oh, by the way, his 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 doctor actually knew exactly what was going He tried to tell um, people. So this this movie, the uh, 1978 one by John Carpenter, which this is actually our third John Carpenter movie that we're covering. Uh, so we already covered The Thing, uh, which was a remake. We covered The uh, Assault on Precinct 13, which he did the original, and now we're doing this one, so... Um, this was like a sleeper hit. Like they didn't expect this movie to do well. It, it was made on like a three hundred thousand dollar budget, and made like seventy eight million dollars then. But if you were to adjust that for inflation, it, it made like three hundred and sixty million dollars. Hmm. So like it was a hit. Like this Solid. movie was huge, uh, and it kind of was responsible for 
getting the kind of that slasher film going because this came out like two years before Friday the Thirteenth, before it's like seven years before uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. So it kind of like set the the resurgence of horror, but also specifically kind of like the slasher film. Hmm. Did you guys know that? No, no, I did not. Well, that's because you guys are idiots. Yeah, I think <laughs> I we've established that. In anything prior about movies? You know, <laughs> I, I would say you're the authority, Mike. Oh, um, I mean, I know I, w- I wouldn't call myself an authority. Just well, I'm saying out guys. of the three of us, yeah, you're that's the, fair. You're well, the authority. Didn't here. Alex go to film school? Uh, yeah, I'm well, not film school. But I studied. Oh, so I feel like. I thought you went to film school, and that was the only reason I brought you on the podcast. Uh, I mean, I did! <laughs> <laughs> so what are some highlights of this movie for you guys? Uh, go ahead, Alex. <laughs> I, I actually like how unintentionally comical it, it is. I feel like how... How so? Like, the the way Mike Myers is just, like, standing in the background. And you mean the shape? The, the, wait, the shape? Uh, what? Yeah, so he's not in the. If you look at the credits, he's not actually um, listed as Mike Myers. He's listed as the Shape. Oh, huh. I, I missed that. I didn't see that. Yeah, <laughs> so he's called. It's it's weird because obviously, Doctor Loomis calls him Michael throughout the movie. Yeah, but yeah, he's called the. Sh- he's credited as the Shape. <laughs> That's, That's so interesting. Weird. Right? Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, it's really interesting. As the Shape was just, it's just, it's just unintentional. Like the way. Like the teens would escape. They're like, "Oh, I just can't open this door that's being propped up with a rake." It's just, it's great. She got, she got stuck in a window, <laughs> right? Oh yeah, she, like Pooh Bear. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like Pooh Bear. By the way, just a tangent. I don't know if you guys saw the Christopher uh, Robin movie with Ewan McGregor. Nope. Uh, it's delightful, but depressing, <clears throat> but delightful. Like the whole movie is depressing until the last like ten minutes. But it is incredible, like, how they brought, like, the little, like, stuffed animals to life. Hmm. It's, you know, as a tangent, since you brought up Pooh Bear, you should definitely watch Christopher Robin. <laughs> okay. For I'll sure. put that on my to-do list. <laughs> All right. Back back, back, back to back to, to Halloween. <laughs> um, yeah. No, it's, it's uh, I think as, like, a horror movie, it, it doesn't, it's not really as scary. Like, we've, we've just been so, um... What's that word I'm looking for? Like we not desensitized. Yeah, desensitized with with gore and, and other stuff. But it's still it's still you know it's a classic. It's you gotta appreciate it for what it is. Well, you the know, things you I, have I, to I, look at. Or go ahead, double. D. I was gonna say I agree with that. It is a classic. But like I rem- like watching this as a kid, it was a lot scarier than it was watching it this time. <laughs> well, there's a couple things you guys got to keep in mind. One, obviously, yes, like um, Alex said, we are a little bit more accustomed to like gore and stuff like that. But there's also a the way movies were made have fundamentally changed. So, like, scary movies in, like, the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and stuff like that were just, like, weird sci-fi stuff that aren't actually scary. It was just, like, creepy to think about things from another world. Like, if you look at, like, The Thing from Another World, which is the the original movie that The Thing is based off of, it's just, like, an alien. It's over, Overall, it's not a scary movie, but it's just creatures and monsters were what was scary if you go and look at the original like mummy and frankenstein and dracula they're not inherently scary it's just weird because they're otherworldly so we kind of have these tropes that change over the decades so this movie kind of started the trope of um what do you call it uh dramatic irony where we know what's going on but the the character on screen doesn't so this was this was what was considered scary back in the day was every time Michael Myers was about to kill somebody or jump out at somebody. We saw it coming five to ten seconds before the the victim would. So the te- it was it was more of tension than being scary because it's like what's going to happen is is she going to turn around and like it's that feeling like man if we were in that situation like what would we do? So there's just like a dramatic tension. And then when you moved into the '90s, like horror became more like the gothic and kind of stuff. Like so you have like the Graham Stoker's Dracula, you have, uh, um, what can I think of the name of it, from Dust Till Dawn, and then, you know, and then it's like the, not a, then it kind of goes and flips the, the genre, and you start just doing, like, generic stuff that makes fun of the stuff from, like, 80s, so, like, scary movie, not scary, well, scary movie, yes, Scream, I Know What You Did Last Summer, are basically movies that are like Friday the 13th, like Halloween, but know they're like it, and they kind of play off the tropes. Um, and then when you go into, like, the 2000s, it was all about the jump scare. 
And now we're kind of like doing a new, a different thing where we play with negative space where like, I don't know if you guys have seen trailers for The Nun, which is the big scary movie that's out right now. Yep. Have you guys seen trailers for it? Definitely. No. Okay, so there's a point in that tr- that trailer. Um, I can't really remember it exactly, but I- I'll just make up an example. It'd be like if you saw the character standing in front of a, a big blank wall and there's a window <laughs> and the camera kind of like focuses on the window. So because the jump scare is what's been big for the last 10 years or so, you expect a jump scare, like something to come out from that window. But instead, something comes out, and that window's on the left side of the frame. Something comes out of the right side of the frame, and it's just like, because we've been trained to expect that. So it's just different ways that the genres have been subverted. So in the 70s, it was scary. Nowadays, it's kind of like mellow, because it's like we see Mike Myers for 10 seconds before he does something. (laughs) Yeah, he'll just be standing there awkwardly. Right, and then the person's like brushing their hair or... (laughs) Well, like, having that, I mean, that's whatever. a different kind of scary, too, you it, know? It's just, yeah. like, ominous. It's a bit yeah. unnerving, where, like, like if you think about it, like, oh, she's, like, she sees Mike Myers, or, I mean, the shape. <laughs> she, <laughs> <laughs> she sees him outside, but, like, no one else really acknowledges him, and and she looks away, and she looks back, and it's gone. Like, that's, that, it's, that, like, that's, it's neat, and it just plays with it, but it's, yeah, I mean, uh, it just wasn't, you know, yeah. The thing that was weird for me on this movie is, and they mentioned it, if they didn't mention it, it wouldn't be weird, but throughout the movie, they mentioned like how busy it's going to be, how crazy it's going to be, and the streets are going to be packed because it's Halloween, <laughs> but there are no extras There's, in this movie. Yeah, Nobody just, in the streets. Just that one block was really busy. Lots of teens were, were messing around. <laughs> Right, like, but it was like one scene, but every time you looked out the house, there was nobody there. Um, so it was a little weird, because it is supposed to be Halloween night. There should be people out trick-or-treating, or teenagers going around being dickheads and egging houses, but that's not really going on. So yeah, that's that's a little strange. Like You can definitely tell this movie was made on a pretty small budget, because there is nobody in the movie besides like the actors. And like you never see more than like two or three people on screen at a time just because they're trying to keep costs down of course mm-hmm. so they tried to get some bigger named actors in this like they tried to get uh christopher lee to be in the movie as uh dr loomis and they could not get him to do it and then they also tried to get peter cushing who was um tarkin in in the original star wars movies but they didn't neither of them wanted it because it was it was just not paid well enough and uh both of them said it was like one of the biggest mistakes of their careers not taking this movie because it ended up being you know a classic Hmm. but you know going into the plot what are what are some things that you guys want to talk about i don't know really like there there wasn't a lot to me that stood out in this movie i thought it was a little slow Um, the pacing is a little slow i agree what about the opening shot though that pov scene is pretty a pretty gnarly pretty crazy way to start out a franchise like starting out with a pov shot and then you just see like the sister judith goes michael and then you just see the little hand just coming around <laughs> and then like you really just see a hand you really don't know that as a child yeah. until it walks outside and you see the parents and then the camera just flips around and then you see it's just like a little kid who did it yeah that's a pretty crazy way to start a movie yeah, like, I, I thought that was probably one of the better parts of the movie. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. And it's just like, imagine watching that in the 70s and not expecting that. Like, I knew that was a thing because I know that his, like, I've seen Halloween 2 where they explain that that what happened and that he was uh, Laurie's, si- or, or Laurie's brother, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh, but yeah, that's insane. Like, think of, like, if you had no idea, if this was the first time watching the movie, you'd never seen any of the other ones. That would blow your goddamn mind to see a six-year-old just murdered somebody. <laughs> and Crazy kids. dead in the eyes. I did think the scene where he kind of escapes, it, like, you don't see his escape. Like, you just see a bunch of, like, patients <laughs> just wandering around in the, the courtyard. <laughs> and then the doctor gets out. And then he just jumps on the car <laughs> and chokes out the nurse. And then, like, yeah, she gets out. And then he just drives off. Like, how the hell did he know how to drive a car? Clearly, somebody yeah, taught right. him. I think that was, right. that was the line. <laughs> yeah. So the thing that's interesting about this, so this was um, Jamie Lee Curtis's like first big role, and then she went on to become the screen queen because she did this prom night, the the fog, and like one other like scary movie. Um, and the reason she got this role was originally John Carpenter didn't want to give her the role, 
but then he found out that she was um i think janet lee's daughter who's the the main actress in uh or the one who gets killed in psycho and he just thought it would be a really cool homage to uh Alfred Hitchcock. <laughs> That's the have. only reason she got the role. That's the reason she got it. <laughs> wow. Because she was young. She was. Oh, I mean, she was nineteen. So she was. She wasn't a minor, but she was also the only teenager out of the actors playing teenagers. So you know, he thought she looked a little too young compared to the other actors. And that was a thing in the the seventies and eighties, where like you had people way too old playing high schoolers. High schoolers, like, yeah. For that's sure. still a thing where we have like twenty five year olds, but at least they look a little younger now. Like if you go back and watch um like Friday the Thirteenth or I mean, if we we covered uh, Nightmare on Elm Street last year, uh, and Carrie, they all were like thirty five years well, old. Oh, even Spider Man, like Andrew Garfield. <laughs> Andrew Garfield looked younger than uh, Tobey Maguire did. Yeah. Oh, oh sure. yeah, definitely. <laughs> or uh, uh, why can't I think? James Mangadello as Flash Thompson. <laughs> that guy was way too big to be in high school. <laughs> this movie, like, there's there's not a lot to it. It is a very simple plot where they're just you know, walking around talking about how, like wanting to have sex with their boyfriends and Jamie Lee Curtis is the square. So they're going to have her watch all the kids. So the other two girls can go bang. And then Mike Myers, like why did Mike Myers go after them? Yeah. I don't, I honestly don't know. There was I no, ra- figure they, it out. that's the thing that's weird about this movie is. So Dr. Loomis kept saying like, we know where he's going. He's going to go back to the town. He's going to go back to his house kind of thing. But, there was no real reason for him to kill the people that he did. It just was so random. And then he, you know, you had the the virgin who survives. And, like, what's funny is this movie kind of, like, set that that trope of, like, the people who are promiscuous die, but the person who's, like, the virgin survives. And John Carpenter was like, yeah, that had nothing to do with it. The only reason she survived was she wasn't distracted like the others were kind of thing. He goes, I didn't mean to make that a trope, but a lot of people, like, interpreted this movie as, like, having that, like, oh, if you're a virgin, you survive. And that's, you know, it even goes into Cabin in the Woods. <laughs> have you guys seen that? Yeah. Yeah. Where they have the whole thing like, oh, the virgin needs to survive to appease the god. You gotta think, and they're making fun of the horror genre. And this movie kind of started it, and that was not intentioned. That was not something he intended to have happen. I didn't even think about that. I mean, like, obviously it happened, right? And, but I didn't think it was because of that. No, no, I mean, it wasn't intended to be, but at the time, that's how critics and people yeah. interpreted it. I do think she should have died, though. Like, when he, like, stabs at her and only gets her arm for some reason. <laughs> they were right, not moving that... fast. His stab was super slow. <laughs> like, what was that? <laughs> I mean, but he's slow. I mean, I, at least that's pretty consistent with him. Like, he never moves fast. Like, even when he grabs the other people, it's because he surprises them. Um, but there were some like interesting deaths. Like he pins a guy to a wall with the knife. Yeah, which was pretty crazy. And then I he did had, like the way he set up the bodies after the deaths. Yeah, because he's like a psycho. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what's weird about this is he's kind of plays it funny. Where the uh, it's really inconsistent how he goes. So sometimes he's very theatrical, and sometimes it's just like I'm gonna kill somebody. So like we don't see him kill his first victim, which is like a guy just some guy in a truck who he stole his body like his his clothes um you just see the camera pan out and you see the body later on when somebody else is investigating the scene yeah and then he kills annie um in her car like just chokes her out and then but it was nothing there was like he was just in the car like why would he be waiting in that car there's no rhyme or reason to it and Uh, then he couldn't even he couldn't even hear the phone call so he wouldn't have known that uh she was gonna be going to the car right so it's just like she's in the car, inexplicable. And then he goes and kills Linda and Bob. And that one was weird because, you know, they have sex and, you know, it's the generic, like, let's have sex and get murdered in a scary movie thing. And so Bob goes downstairs to get a beer and he, you know, strangles him and then stabs him and pins him to the wall. And then he puts <laughs> a sheet over the head. <laughs> the ghost <laughs> Yeah. With the glasses, <laughs> it's so, yeah, he takes so the glasses, great. puts it o- puts a sheet over his head, cuts holes in the sheet so he can see, puts the glasses on <laughs> over the sheet, and then walks into the bedroom. And Linda's like, "You see something you like?" And then it pans down, and you see her boobs, and she's just she like stands there, she stands there, and she's like, "Give me my beer, give me my beer." I would have thought it was funny if he just chucked the beer at her head, yeah, like stun her or something, and then did. But then he ends up, you know, killing her and. Like Double D said, by the end of the movie, Jamie Lee Curtis 
gets involved in chases gets chased around and then she ends up there and like they're all posed like she opens the door and one of the boys like falls over and then like she goes in the bed and the girl's like lying there naked and she opens the closet and the other girl's just like posed there <laughs> it's really weird and like we i get this guy's supposed to be a psychopath but it's just really strange how he moves all the bodies around there's no there's no reason for it like and that i guess is part of the reason why this movie is scary is that the six-year-old kid just snapped and there's nothing to it. And a psychologist or a psychologist, like his doctor, just says there's no reason behind it. He's just evil. <laughs> yeah. So like he says, like this is like one of the more famous quotes from the movie. He goes, I met him 15 years ago. I was told there was nothing left. No reason, no conscience, no understanding, even the most rudimentary sense of life or death, of good or evil, of right or wrong. I met this six-year-old child with a blank, pale, emotionless face and the blackest eyes, the devil's eyes. I spent eight years trying to reach him. And then another seven years trying to keep him locked up because I realized what was living behind that boy's eyes was purely and simply evil. <sighs> so, like, this, this, I think that the other thing about this is prior to this movie, you know, any kind of movie that did have, like, a killer in it, it was explained, like, I, I, like, there was something to it. Like, if you go back and watch, uh, like, Cape Fear. The guy was just like a rapist and would like do what he had to. It was about revenge. Or you go and look at other scary movies like Dracula or whatever. It was because, you know, killing to survive. Like there was a reason why the monster was doing what it was doing. And this, there is no reason. And I think that's he's can just in, a murderer. Inherently be creepy. Yeah, he's just evil for the sake of it. And that hadn't really been explained before. And then that ultimately ends up happening, becomes the case behind jason to an extent where he was just you know it's revenge but also he's just mindless killing machine and you know that, that, I, I get it like that's a little bit scarier not knowing why it's kind of like why a lot of people with like the joker don't like having a definitive origin to the joker because once you know his actual background it doesn't make him as scary like it's scary to think yeah, that there's somebody it, who's just it's so fucking crazy yeah it's that it's leaving it up to your imagination which i appreciate yeah. more in this one than this than the remake that we'll talk about but it, it's definitely that not knowing like his intentions or re real reason why because like you're like he's just why is he killing these people they're not even related <laughs> and so <laughs> right and then there's like a supernatural element to it as well because this guy is so big <laughs> But he's silent. Like, you never hear him coming. You never see him. Jamie Lee Curtis sees him just, like, hanging out behind the bushes. And then the friend goes to check it. And he's just gone. Or somebody will be looking out the window, see him across the street. And then they turn their head and they turn back. And he's just gone. He's like Batman. He's gone. <laughs> he's like Batman. He's evil Batman. <laughs> gone. And that's, you know, kind of scary, too. And just thinking of, like... Here's this guy who kills, who feels essentially no pain. Because this guy gets pretty fucked up. Like, Jamie Lee Curtis is, like, the only one who's able to put up a fight for whatever reason. Yeah, so can she... we just talk about how he got stabbed in the eyeball with a hanger and then, oh, like, disables hanger. him? <laughs> Stabs him with a kneading meal in the... In the... Oh, yeah, she stabbed... that was the first <laughs> yeah. thing she does. Is when she she goes over to her friend's house and somehow gets out, you know, by squeezing through the window... And it gets across the street. She brings this killer back to the house that has the two kids she's babysitting. Well, she said she killed him. She thought she did. Yeah. Right? But then he comes back. Well, no, she thought she did, but he started chasing her. Yeah. And that's why she went to the other, like, the neighbor's house. The neighbor turned on the light, but then they decided to... <laughs> they uh, closed the, sh the curtains on. <laughs> yeah. So then, she, at that point, she knows he's still alive. So then he runs back to her house with the two children hides in the closet stabs him with a wire hanger and he goes down and then by the end of the movie how did she get loomis's gun oh no loomis no, didn't, no, no, she didn't no, get no, loomis's gun that's the one. sequel yeah. yeah so loomis ends up showing up right at the last minute so she like <laughs> he goes to like tackle her and they fall off the balcony or something like no, that. No, 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 that's a, that, that's, that's also a, the, that's the other one. So it's happens, so hard to keep them separate. She, he's like standing over her. Yeah, Loomis shows up in the room, shoots him. Oh, like shoots five him like six times. Shoots like six times, and then he falls out, and then it cuts back to him, and he also clicks he's again. <laughs> yeah, so after great. he's all already fallen it's over so the great. thing. It's so great. What are you doing, Loomis? <laughs> <laughs> well the other thing that's weird is once again they go and look over and he's gone yeah. and she says something along the lines like i think that was the boogeyman and he's like you're exactly right that's exactly what he is or something along yeah. those lines yeah. 
Oh no, this is what it is. He goes, she goes, it was the boogeyman. He goes, as a matter of fact, it was. And then you hear the, the music and the, the, we didn't even talk about the music. Like, um, John Carpenter does the music for most of his movies. And they're, you know, this is iconic. Like it's one of those things like, because it's piano, it's really hard to make the sound yourself. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's iconic. Like you hear it and you know, and it's one of those things that you don't really get in movies anymore. And like, Everybody, if you hear this, the uh, the theme song or the Mike Myers tune or whatever you want to call it, they instantly recognize it as Halloween. Um, Friday the 13th, you have the... Like, everyone knows what that is. And then you have, like, Indiana Jones. Everyone can do that one. 007, everyone knows what that is. That's not really a thing we get anymore. So that's another thing that kind of makes this movie scary is, like, that music. It's really effective in like setting the tone and the creep factor of this movie. Hmm. Cool. Any anything else you guys want to talk about with this one? Mm, no. Cool. Really. cool. 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 I did like just really briefly. I did like how she, the Loomis who was just telling like everybody who would listen like, don't fucking underestimate this guy. Like he's fucking evil. Like he, he's when he talks to Sheriff Brackett. Um, he was just like, I watched this guy for 15 years staring at a wall. Not st- <laughs> he's not seeing the wall, just looking past it. You know, just waiting for some something to go off on this guy. Like, you can't ignore it. We need to do it. And Brackett's just like, dude, no fancy talk kind of thing. Like, everybody just wanted to ignore this. And it's kind of hard for me to separate this one from the second one because, of course, I saw the second one first. Um, and it's it's really weird to me that they're kind of ignoring the second movie for this new one so i'm really curious as to how it goes like if they're still gonna have michael myers is uh laurie strahd's sister or brother uh because who knows if they're erasing the second movie he might not be anymore which is also interesting in that you know obviously this movie didn't set it up to be like that it's weird that they made her the sister in the sequel so i don't know many ways to go yep so let's just talk about the new one are you guys ready Halloween 2007. I've got a got a plot summary here for us. This one's from Alex Winder. Young Michael Myers is committed to Smith's Grove after the brutal murder of his mom and sister's boyfriends and his sister Judith. After being there for roughly 17 years, he returns to his hometown of Haddonfield in search of one of the only people he has ever cared about, his baby sister, Laurie Strode. As he is tracked down by Dr. Sam Loomis, he will kill anybody who gets in his path. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I gotta really practice talking like that. <laughs> you know what normal. you need to do? on Because, like, you did that last time. Yeah. Do you have a pop filter on your mic? No. You need to get one. Should I? You you really do. Because uh, I had to edit out. Every time you do a P sound when you talk like that, it goes, I, I can really see it and hear it. Got it. And it's not something you can filter out because it's a because it's a P sound. Yeah. It'll filter out everything else. It sounds really weird. Um, so I had to manually did that. And like for whatever reason, we you had a lot of P sounds. <laughs> so it was a pain in the ass. Uh, so yeah, get a get a pop filter if you can. All right, pop. Shit, I feel I fuck. I feel like I derailed this now. Um, but yeah, shit. I don't even know how I want to start this. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I guess that's a pretty accurate plot thing. Yeah, it's a pretty, uh, shortened. Did it say, can you, can you read the first part of it? Did it say his mom, his mom's boyfriend? It said, uh, after the brutal murder of his mom and sister's boyfriends and his sister, Judith. Okay, but it didn't kill his mom. Uh, no, didn't say anything about the mom. Uh, say it again one more time. (laughs) Young Michael, My- My- Young Michael Myers is committed to Smith's Grove after the brutal murder of his mom and sister's boyfriends and his sister Judith. Oh, his mom and sister's boyfriends. Okay, that's just a weird way of phrasing that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, yeah, for like, like the first two times you said it, I thought you said his mom. Yeah, his mom. Her boyfriend. No, no, no. The, the okay. boyfriend. The mom, mom and, and sister's sister. boyfriends <laughs> and the mom and sister. And it's just a really weird <laughs> to say it. Just say the mom the sis, his sister boy, i don't know boyfriend it, that was a really weird to phrase it and boyfriend. i don't like it who who made that review <laughs> it was alex winder fuck you alex winder aka al win 11491 what the hell <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah i mean 
So the thing that's interesting about this movie is I don't think – one, the studio didn't have a lot of faith in this movie. So they released it in August because they didn't want it to go up against Saw 4, which came out the same year. So they ended up having it come out in August. Saw 4. Right. Didn't want to go and, up against know, Saw 4. Yeah, right. I mean the Saw movies were huge. Four. So like, I kind of get it, but it's like <laughs> – this is an iconic story, and you have Rob Zombie who did, you know, House of Thousand Corpses, The Devil's Rejects. Like, people who are into, like, the horror genre really dug his movies. Like, you would think that this would be, like, a slam dunk, and it, it, it actually was. Even though it had pretty bad reviews, it made a lot of money. It made, like, $300 million or something like that. Like, so that's why it got a sequel almost right away. But, yeah, they didn't have very much faith in this movie. There were certain things I did like about it. Like, I, Malcolm McDowell as Dr. Loomis I thought was fantastic. Um, I think Malcolm McDowell is, like, super, super creepy himself. But he was, <laughs> there was a little bit more range to him in this. Like, normally he just plays either kind of, like, a stern boss or he plays, like, a creepy kind of, like, mysterious man. And this he was, like, very tender and seemed to generally care about the well-being of others. <laughs> Damn, you guys are making me <laughs> uh, I, I don't really I mean yeah I, I agree I, like with the way he was with Michael once he was committed like he hugs him and says everything's gonna be okay and he goes to him every single day to see him and he generally seems to care about I mean, wanting even, to make Michael even better. before he met him he seemed like he actually cared about him like when he met the mother in the school right. it seemed like something that he was invested in already Exactly. And I think they did a really good job because this was back before we have like the digital de-aging that the Marvel movies do. But they did a pretty good job with making him look younger with like makeup and like, <laughs> with the long hair. Long, long hair. <laughs> he, it worked though. He looked younger. He looked like 20 <laughs> he did, years he younger. Look, I was just bothered by it. <laughs> because you're so used to him yeah, not having it. Exactly. You, you're so used to seeing him look like he did in the modern day <laughs> portion of it. Yeah, with the square like, haircut. <laughs> Yeah, you're used to seeing him look like that, and that's it, because it seems like he went from Clockwork Orange to that over a night. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it was. Because I can't think of another movie where he looks young. Like, everything I can think of him in, he just looks like an old, angry man. <laughs> um, this movie's weird, because it's half prequel. So this movie's like an hour and 55 minutes, and it's 55 minutes before it to cover the first like five to ten minutes of the original movie yeah the uh the child scene right yeah. so yeah so it's 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 a little bit different because the kid's also older before he kind of gets committed so he's 10 years old versus six years old and he's in there a little longer so by the end you know by the time he's out and about in the first movie he's 21 and this one he's 27 years old and this is interesting because they kind of made him like i wouldn't say he's scrawny but he's like an average kid and then he's just like a monster. And yoked. the reason it's <laughs> yeah, it's weird. So his mom was played by um, Rob Sherry Zombie's Moon Zombie, wife, yeah. Rob Zombie's wife. And the main reason she got the role was one, you know, it's his wife, nepotism. But also she's very tall. And he's like, I want we wanted to be able to explain why he got so big. So we said if he has a tall mom, that would explain why he's so big when he grows up. It didn't make any sense. He was a fucking monster. <laughs> it's Tyler Maine. <laughs> Sabretooth. <laughs> yeah, he was the he was the original saber tooth in two thousand. Dude, <laughs> yeah, he's a huge dude. He's a wrestler. Um, so the thing that's weird about this one is it it takes. I get what they were doing, and you know we had a lot of movies in that time frame that they were doing this. They had like the Texas Chainsaw reboot where you kind of saw like the origin of Leatherface. We had um, Hannibal Rising or something like that, like the prequel to all the Hannibal movies, so you could see like where he got his start. And find out why he became a cannibal because he ate his sister as a child because his sister and him were like kidnapped. And so a lot of movies were going through and doing this in the day. But in this particular case, I do think it kind of takes the scariness out of it because it excuses it. It's like, oh, he's just mentally he was Deranged. mentally abused and yeah. kind of thing. So it, it does take it away a little bit. I do like how they gave him this like obsession with maths. <clears throat> that was so weird. I thought that was pretty interesting how he was just I trying mean, to, like, No, I mean, I agree. I thought the whole 55-minute scene was very interesting, but 
I mean, I, like you guys said, it, it kind of takes away from the movie in that it, it, it doesn't leave it to your imagination. It's if a it less was mysterious. Just, like, but... If you just had a movie about a person who went crazy and this wasn't a Halloween movie, it could have been pretty interesting. Because the whole, like, I really did like how he was trying to disassociate himself from being part of his family. He thought that he was ugly. And he was just trying to, like, make, just be a void. Like, he was trying to make himself be, like, a non-entity kind of thing to an extent. Yeah. Like, I thought that was I think they also kind of tried to establish that him in the mask compared to him as a a person was a different, different thing. Right, because, yeah, when he puts on the clown mask at the beginning of the movie and kills his sister, the boyfriend, the stepfather, and then when he come, he goes and sees his, his little sister, who he calls Boo, takes off the mask, and all of a sudden, like, he couldn't remember doing that stuff. And he had the mask on when he killed Spy Kid as well, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Spy Kid. Oh, yeah, it was uh, Spy Kid. Was Spy <laughs> Daryl something or other. Um, it took me a minute to realize where where I saw him from, but yeah, th- that's the other thing about this movie. Like this kid gets it from fucking all angles, where it's like his dad is a or his stepfather is like a dick to him, and then like he has got these bullies, and then like the principal kind of like looks at him when like that, and he's like fuck you to the principal, and <laughs> then they like search his locker. He's got like a dead cat in his locker, and we even see the first time we see him is he's killing his pet rat, and then he goes and tells his mom like, oh my rat died, I so flush I had it. to flush him. Kind of thing. It, like his sister's like, "Oh, you were jerking off with the mouse or something like that." It was really fucking weird, and it's totally like dysfunctional Rob Zombie. Like it, it was kind of disturbing, like how fucked up that family dynamic was. Oh, totally. And then like how the kids were like, so like, we were we all were in middle school at some point, and like kids are fucked up. And I guess it would be a little bit different, like if one of our parents was a stripper and everybody in this small town knew. But it was really weird how explicit those bullies got. Like, do you think th- um, she would let like let me come on her tits and then lick the tits or lick the cum or some shit like that? Like, okay, it got really fucking explicit <laughs> for like fucking middle school kids. Like, yeah, that was really those fucking kids were weird. fucking assholes, <laughs> right? And then he kills Spy Kid in the forest, just smashes him with a branch. <laughs> yeah, and the kid begs him and takes his money too. Please, that was the thing that was weird. It's like if he was completely like disassociating. It seems weird that he would take the money. I don't know. It, it's a little weird. Like, I get where they were going with it. And they were tr- they tried to make him a little sympathetic because he, like, legitimately seemed to care about Lori, his sister. And, like, she had a different name as a baby. I don't remember what the name was. Um, All he said was Boo. He said Boo, but they say later on the sheriff tells you that, you know, she was adopted and yeah. changed and everything like that. So, like, this movie took the big reveal from, like, Halloween 2 and put it in this one. Lori never finds out, but the audience finds out that uh he is her older sister and like he or older brother and he tries to tell her but he doesn't speak and they say that he hadn't spoken in like 15 years. So in this one his whole mission is he is trying to find his sister. But he like immediately recognizes her, which is there's no way. Not a chance. There, no, it's it's like, through smell cuz like if he, he's like sniffing at the door when she's like right there, he's like <sighs> <laughs> like this is okay cool but you would not smell the same like baby cool. has a distinct smell like babies smell I love like babies <laughs> you love babies double D? I do I love babies I want a baby yeah I like babies too <laughs> um, but babies have a distinct smell yeah like it, it's it's and it's like it's a joke it, it's a it's a pretty sexist joke in like sitcoms and stuff but like a lot of TV shows will have like women who really are like want a baby and they're like oh you smell like a baby like it's a pretty consistent joke in, like, Scrubs and Friends. There is a smell. There's no way that he would recognize his sister based off smell. <laughs> no, I, I don't believe that at all. There's no chance. No. But, yeah, that's what he was doing. And there, it's it's just absurd. <clears throat> that, and, like, I, I read some stuff. Like, how did he get into town? Because you think he – there's no – like, when he killed the trucker, who's the guy from Dawn of the Dead um, – that's where he he's from. His, I was, I was yeah, trying he's to from figure the, it out. The dead. Um, so he kills this trucker guy who's trying to take a shit, and he's just like staring at him. And you know, you think that like, that, that guy's a big guy, and you think that he might actually put up a pretty good fight against Michael. Nope. He doesn't. Nope. <laughs> um, he takes his clothes, and I'm like, "There's no fucking way that he could drive a big rig with like a double clutch kind of thing." Yeah. There's no way. 
and then like I read some stuff, and Rob Zombie says that no, he didn't drive; he walked all the way there. What? Yeah. <laughs> Which is, I mean, I don't know how far away this like institution was, but it seems absurd that it's. There's no way that this guy drove, much less a big rig. I don't know. It it doesn't really make a ton of sense, but whatever. I. A lot of the deaths in this movie, I didn't understand what happened. Like, the kid, any of you guys tell me which, like, what actually happened with the female guard when he escaped? Female guard? The female guard. The one that shot him with the shotgun? Or tried to shoot him and he used, uh, he used the, another security the guard's knee shield? Yeah. Um, I watched it ten times, that scene. I asked Katrina, and we could not figure out what he actually oh, did I thought to the he, female like, guard. S- like, tore her throat out. That's what I thought, but you don't actually see that. Like, he grabbed her by the chest. Oh, did he? I could have yeah. sworn he, like, used a finger and, like, stabbed her throat. So, uh, that, I could, actually, I, I couldn't tell. I looked at that specifically to see if that's what he did, but you see her neck. I actually it didn't like, see that, because, like, the one version I watched was the unrated version, and then I didn't have that sequence at all. <laughs> You really didn't have that sequence? You didn't have the. How did he break sequence? out of the? Uh, yeah, how do you, how do you? Escape? He just kills Danny Trejo, and then it it skips over to the the truck scene. Oh, that's super weird. What? That's in the unrated really weird. version. Yeah. Super Are you sure? Weird. Did you watch the the one that was on FX? Maybe. Maybe I'm not too sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it was on TV. Like there was an option to watch it on like some other app, and it was like a a censored for TV version. So I didn't watch it. Um, yeah, I didn't know that. I but yeah, it's no. So Alex, so basically, what happens is there's a whole. Did your version have that like asshole janitor guy? Yeah, I had that. Okay. What's weird is I thought for sure that guy was going to get murked. Yeah, like they totally it, set it up, and he was just nowhere to be found. Oh, really? And it's weird for because, me. He yeah. So he comes back and tries raping a girl. Or is that what? The fuck? what? <laughs> well so the one we watched mike was the theatrical version right I, holy sh- that's weird that's so different <laughs> that's insane see so, he an tries yeah version. raping a girl in front of it, right are you wait are you guys talking about that that weird guy that was with danny trejo yeah yeah he and that's how mike myers escapes how does he escape for you guys okay i'll, I'll let me paint a picture of this <laughs> It was October 30th, 2007. <laughs> no. So, no, in this version, what happens is it sets it up. It's almost like the, um, the asshole guard in the Green Mile. You think it's going to be something like that. Yeah. But so you see a scene with him at Younger where Danny Trejo, like, walks up to the window or the, the cell and is like, hey, Mike, yeah. like, don't, don't get, you know, don't let yourself down. Like, just don't think about the walls. Just, you know, get inside your head and, you know, they can't, they can't hurt you there. It's very compassionate with, you know, the young Mike Myers. And so then it fast forwards the 15 years. You see Danny Trejo has a haircut and, he, you know, he looks a little older and he's walking with this guy and he's like, hey, you know, I'm going to be the guy's like, you're not my boss. He goes like, dude, this I'm out of here by the end of the yeah. month. Like, yeah. I don't care. Just like, don't be a dick because like this is an important job. And so he goes to like touch the mask and Trejo's like, don't do that. It pisses him off. And then the guy says something fucked up and Trejo's like, dude, you have to keep working here. This he will remember. Like he's a sharp kid. Uh, I've spent fifteen years taking care of him. He's a good boy, kind of thing. And so you think that like Mike Myers is going to have a little compassion for him. So what ends up happening is Doctor Loomis is no longer going to see him. Yeah. Um, he says after fifteen years of me not talking, I need to move on. So they're going to transfer him to a different hospital. So you have all these guards who are like pissed. Oh, like, man, why do we have to do here tonight? Uh-huh. Um. This is ridiculous. They're like, well, we have to move the patient. And they're like, whatever. It could wait. It's not a big deal. Like, who? They're like, oh, it's Mike Myers. And then they get kind of, like, nervous. Mm-hmm. So they have him, and he's chained up like crazy. Uh, so he's got, like, shackles on his legs, shackles on his arms. So he can only move his arms about three or four inches. And so they're in, like, one of those, like, double lock rooms where there's, like, a gate. You walk in, lock that gate, and then there's another gate. And as, as they're about to unlock the second gate, he just snaps out of his chains and like fights like four guys. And then there's this female guard who like opens up the door and she's about to shoot him. And he just picks up another guard who takes the shotgun blast. And then he like charges her, puts her into a wall and you just see her collapse. And she like has blood all over her chest, but like he didn't have a weapon. He didn't have anything like 
it's weird. Like you, sh- it shows him like beat the shit out of another guy against the wall. Yeah, you see him like the wall. Yeah. right. It, it, but with her, you just see her hit the wall, and I'm like, was there like a coat hanger on the wall? <laughs> like what caused her to die? I went on Wikipedia, I like Googled it, and I could not find an answer as to how this woman died. And then what ends up happening is he, um, you see Danny Trejo on his way out. And he, like, goes to clock out. He hears a phone ringing, and he's like, Margie, where are you? And then it, like, pans around the corner. You see, like, a woman dying. And then he runs into Michael, and Michael kind of, like, stares at him. And you think that, like, oh, he cares about Trejo because he was nice. So Trejo's like, come on, I got to bring you back. Goes to put the handcuffs on him. And then he, like, beats the shit out of him. Yeah. And then you think he keeps trying to drown him, and then he, 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 he leaves him, and Trejo thinks he's going to survive. And then... Mike Myers picks up a TV and smashes it with yeah, it. He just drops a CRT <laughs> TV on his face. Yeah, and the whole time he's like, I was good to you. Yeah. I was good to you. Why, Michael? Why? Yeah, I totally but, thought he was going to let him live. Right. I thought so, too. And then I thought what might happen was that that asshole guard guy was going to be around. He would kill him. And then Trejo would try to stop it. And that's why Trejo got, gets killed is because he tries to stop somebody else from getting killed. But no, Trejo got killed. So how it happened in my version was that how he escapes is that those that asshole janitor guy comes back with his cousin and then they start raping one of those uh psychiatric uh people inside Mike Myers' room <laughs> while, while they're trying to get Mike Myers to join in. And then Mike Myers they start the touching fuck? the mask and Mike Myers hates it, so he he kills the two of them. And he like goes on a murder rampage. Okay, so that makes sense. Okay, actually, no, that does make sense, because I did remember reading that this movie did not do well in test screenings, and they reshot the escape scene. So that must have been the original escape scene, and people didn't like it, so they changed it. So, Double D, what we watched in the theatrical release was the reshoot. Yeah, it's a, I, I'm looking it up on YouTube right now. They said it's the alternated escape scheme theatrical version. Yeah, weird. Interesting. Very interesting. That's pretty fucked up. <laughs> I liked your guys more. That, that one. <laughs> it's it's pretty fucked up, actually. Um, I mean, you can go watch it. It's still on the the video account that I've made for the podcast. I think you could probably watch it today if you want to. If you just want to watch that scene, it's at about like forty five minutes in. I just um, sent it to you guys on uh, on Discord. Hmm. Yep. Um. So anyway, the, what's weird is so the, it takes fifty five minutes before you even introduce teenage Lori. And from this point on, it's almost identical to the original movie. Like, almost beat for beat. They're walking home from school. They're talking about this chemistry stuff. There's a really stupid line where they're like, did you know that ethyl alcohol boils at 78 degrees? <laughs> That's really cool. Like, really stupid. Like, the dialogue's fucking terrible. It's, like, it's funny. The first like, 50 minutes of the movie is solid. I actually like I'm the opposite. I actually like the last half compared to the first half. Because I, like, I feel like the relationship with the kids is more like, more like a kid. Like, it's more believable. They're, like, having fun and interacting with each other. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. <laughs> it's just like, you might as well have just been like, science. Yeah, science. Because like, they're just like saying some bullshit out of a textbook. Um, but ultimately, they actually shot this movie in the same neighborhood as the original one. So a lot of the houses are the same houses. Um, so they go through and it's basically the same. Like They set up the whole thing like Lori's going to babysit both kids so that way they can... You know, Tommy, the two other Tommy's people not can the, go fuck. The brother, right? It's like just a baby, baby, some kid she's sitting, babysitting. That was the same thing in the previous movie. She was just babysitting. Oh, it wasn't her oh, brother. I missed that. Um, what's weird about this one is like Bob and Linda go to fuck in the Myers house. And that's why they get killed is because Mike Myers goes to his house and yeah, sees and them there and he ends up killing them. Um can we talk about Why like did real he... quick? Just like the first time Lori sees sees Michael just staring at her through the window, like yeah, she looks at him like three times and he's still just he's standing still there. Just she doesn't there. say anything. <laughs> yeah, would you guys like? What would you guys do if you saw this masked fucking, fucking behemoth like... of a man staring at you through a window? Well, is, and that's the thing that's weird about this movie, and this is this is a weird time frame for movies in general. So, in two thousand seven, everybody had a cell phone. Who was in high school, or most people did. Yeah. They don't use cell phones in this movie at she all. She uses it once. Right. 
it's it's one of those things where like movie movies have still to this day have never really quite figured how to adjust movies in a to world that phones. cell phones exist so they just have to act like they don't because in most movies most problems could be solved by a cell phone thing or what you do is what they should do is just have a cell phone be used and they call in like maybe something's going on where because they, they same thing they say that a boogeyman came from that house like if somebody did something every year pretended to be mike myers and kill somebody or not kill somebody but like do pranks and stuff and it, it's a famous prank to call the police and say hey someone's trying to kill me on halloween then you can kind of buy that she calls the police and nobody does anything or something like that but she just never really tries and that's just the problem with movies in general in this time period that like nobody really figured out what to do with cell phones so they just have to pretend like they don't exist or something um i i still thought in this portion i really thought that malcolm mcdowell was great and he sincerely seemed to want to be helping people he sincerely seemed to know what was going on was trying to stop it but honestly the kids were it was like for the murders it was basically the same thing he did the same thing with the sheet he did the same thing with pinning the guy to the wall um the only difference in this one was the second girl so in the first one he kills annie first in her car in this one he kills linda first and then annie he's about to kill but then linda uh laurie shows up and so it gets distracted. So she actually survives and gets killed in the second movie, um, which came out in like 2009. But other than that, like the it's basically the same thing. The di- where it gets a little different is he ends up kidnapping Laurie and like shows her the photo of them together as a baby, and she doesn't really understand. Like, so she stabs him. <laughs> right. Like, so I've never seen him before. <laughs> right. So she stabs him, gets away gets in like falls down a pole malcolm mcdowell comes shoots him a couple of times they go into the car and they're just sitting in the car talking michael grabs her through the car window (laughs) drags her out takes her again and then it's it's pretty fucked up like mcdowell like chases and like tries to help out and then so michael grabs him by the head and starts like squeezing his head and Lori just grabs the gun and runs away to leave Malcolm <laughs> McDowell to die, which is super fucked up. And then somehow Malcolm McDowell doesn't die. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know why he should have, uh, but he he didn't. The Michael Myers keeps like chasing her around the house, like she's like hiding in walls and shit like that. And she ends up getting tackled by him. They fall over the balcony. She lands on him, and she starts pulling the trigger. It's a magnum, so it's, you know, um, like a revolver-style gun. So click, 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 and then right as he's about to wake up and she, she gra- he grabs her, she fires. You see her get sprayed with blood. She just screams, and then, like, yeah. that's the end of the movie. So she shoots him in the face. Right. <laughs> I, I mean, there are certain things about this movie that I liked. Like, I, I liked the escape scene. I liked him being, like, a big monster guy who, in this one, he's not necessarily just the slow, rambling, he doesn't feel pain. Like, he reacts when he gets shot. Yeah. He reacts to, like, pain, but he just keeps going. Um, I did like the, the whole, was it in this one that he kept breathing really deep, or was it the original one he kept, you just heard him breathe a lot? That was the first yeah, one. Yeah, the original. Okay. Like, this one, he's just a silent thing, and, like, it's weird. Like, I just don't understand why he cares about his sister so much. Like, there's no rhyme or reason for it. No, I don't. None at all. Because if he's a psychopath, he shouldn't care. Have you guys seen the sequel to this movie? Nah. No. So I haven't seen it either, but I remember specifically not going to see it because I read a review for it. But basically what happens in that one is that, like, because in this one, he also killed Lori's parents. Like, he was looking for her and somehow knew that's who it was killed the parents looking for her and in this one so in the sequel she goes and lives with her the friend that survives like the brunette um he and the sheriff so she lives with them and then mike myers has a dream of his mom coming back to life saying hey you need to go find your sister so he goes back to the town starts killing a bunch of people and then she's going to like a therapist and starts she starts having the same visions and finds out that she's the sister. And so by the end of the movie, she tricks Malcolm McDowell to come in and get killed. And then she kills Michael, but then she puts on the mask and then she gets institutionalized. So it turns out like she's crazy too. What the hell? 
Yeah, so, like, Rob Zombie really kind of fucked it on that one. Like, he took it and made it go in a really weird direction. Wait, so how did he not die getting shot in the face? Fuck, dude, I don't know. <laughs> By a magnum. I think, like, he gets out of the 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 ambulance or something like that. I don't, I haven't seen it. I just, like, looked into it. Because I remember that reading that, like, she becomes Mike Myers by the end of the second one or some shit like that. That sounds stupid. It sounds really dumb. So now they're rebooting it again and, like, erasing everything. But, like, it's weird how much this movie kept the same as the original. Yeah, I mean, like we said, it was a classic, so you want to keep elements of it. I think all they wanted to do was flesh out his beginning story and right. then make well, it a the little thing scarier. Is, he called um, John Carpenter and said, hey, like I'm going to be doing this. And John Carpenter was like, cool, I'm cool with you doing it. Just make it your own. And I don't feel like he really did. Like The only thing he did was make the backstory a little bit more fucked up. Like He just made it be a broken, unhealthy home. But the rest of it, like, once he's out, the plot is almost the same. Like, the people die exactly the same way. Like, yeah, the even dialogue, the babysitting, the, the sex and murder. The and dialogue like, is almost the same in so many places. Like, word for word, the same. I, in a lot I, I feel like he just ruined the mythology of it. Because, like, it, 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 it starts out with, like, everyone's like, oh, I mean, like, I, I never saw it coming. Like, this kid was like, like they just, in the first one, they're like, hey, he's just like a, a six-year-old kid. And how could he do that? But now, like, it, like they give him like a fucked up backstory and stuff like that. It, it kind of just ruins it for me. Like the what I liked about, uh, to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of Halloween franchise. I, I like Friday the Thirteenth more. But what I liked that Halloween did was that you know he's like he's like a force of evil essentially. He right, uh, and that that's the thing where I I I I do like the original better. Um, I I do like the aspect that we. There's no rhyme or reason to why this guy is doing what he's doing. Like, there's there's no reason for it. Like, there's no real reason for him to want to go back to his house. But he does, and he just kills everybody he sees. It's really weird. And it and it's creepy. And it's not even that he kills everybody he sees right away. Like, he'll see them, and then if he sees them a second time, it's almost like, hey, you get a pass once. But if I see you a second time, you're You did. <laughs> um... <laughs> It's weird, and it's just so inexplicable, and it's just, it's scary to think that there are just evil people out in the world. It's so much easier to accept somebody who was, you know, diddled as a kid, or somebody who <laughs> stepfather beat him, or, you know, lost a loved one, or fell in a chemical bath after being a failed comedian, stand-up comedian <laughs> kind of thing, like, that, you know. It makes sense. You know, you, you kind of justify it. And that's that's why I think, once again, the Heath Ledger Joker so far is the most effective Joker we've had on screen. Because we don't know because anything about him. because you don't know about him. It's just, as far as we can tell, he's just an evil motherfucker. Yeah. And you're, you're right, um, Alex. It does kind of take away the mythos of this character. And he's a big dude, but it doesn't explain why he's able to do the shit that he can do. So I guess we're at that point. You know, we've been recording almost an hour. It was this unnecessary? Do you, do you think this movie, this series needed to be rebooted? Mm, this I think is a tough one, just because like I think it did need to be updated, and I I I actually did enjoy the newer movie. I don't think it was a great movie, but I personally enjoyed it more than the original. I. I like the original better. I do agree that the pacing was a little slow, but I think that's just a product of the time and the budget. And I do think it should have been rebooted. Like, I don't... I just don't think that... And I think this movie was better than the the reviews say it is. Like, the yeah. reviews for this movie are, like, garbage. Like, it's got, like, a like a 40% in Rotten Tomato or something like that. Yep. I think it's better than that. I just don't know if this is the right reboot. Like, I think Alex said is like it does take away the 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 mythos of the character and it, it kind of dilutes it and i don't think that a lot of people are like oh this movie's just gory for the sake of being gory i appreciate the fact that it wasn't overly gory like there is you know blood splatter you do see him slit somebody's throat but it's not over the top like the saw movies which i really don't like the saw movies um or like it could have been a lot worse considering we at this point we'd already had the hills of eyes reboot we already had Hostel Part 1 and Part 2. We've already had three Saw movies. Like, this could have been a really fucked up movie, and it really wasn't that bad, all things considered. No, it wasn't. Especially since there were survivors. Right. 
Alex? What about you, Alex? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I, I feel like yes, like, it, it, like you guys, if it, it, it definitely like a reboot now would be nice if it's done properly or handled re- really well. I, I'm not a huge fan of this one. I still prefer the original. I'm actually really excited for that new Halloween coming out. I hear great things it about it. It looks really fucking yeah, good. Like, yeah. So, ah, uh, yeah. Then the reviews are already mixed for it. Like, I've heard some weird shit about. It. Like, I heard that they're playing it really straight, but then some reviews are saying that it's like comical. Hmm. So I really don't know. Like, the trailers make it look fucking fantastic. Like Jamie Lee Curtis, like I pray every day he escapes. Like. It's a complete twist on it, and I'm curious as if they're going to be siblings or not. Like, that's the main reason I want to watch <laughs> Just Jamie for that. Lee Curtis. <laughs> and I think Jamie Lee Curtis it looks like she's going to do a really great job with yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's that's my bit. Um, thank you guys for listening. Check out everything that's MDX Pods related at mdxpods.com, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook at MDX Pods. Check out our other podcast, Ruin My Childhood with Me and Kat. And other than that, um, check us out on YouTube as well. Uh, Link will be in the description below. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you guys for listening. Later, dude. See ya. Bye. (laughs)